Hello, welcome to Weekly Prayer. Today we've got um, something surprising about Jesus to read, or at least I find it surprising, but I also find it reassuring. So let's, without any wastage of time, get into prayer. Lord, it's great to be with you. Be with us. May we know the feeling of your presence in our lives and your understanding on this scripture. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, having sort of big this reading, let's read it. It's Mark 6 and the first six verses thereof. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. You, this reading is is intricate and, and quite quite wonderful. So he leaves the place and he comes to his hometown. You know, he's got home. It's something you look forward to, isn't it? And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. So those that heard him would almost certainly have known him. Towns and villages were not so big in those days. They were astounded. They were overwhelmed, you might say, by the wisdom and the cleverness of what he said and by the deeds of power that he did. But they were then also slightly confused. They see this opulence of gifting, this, this wonderful ability to heal people. And they say, but hang, hang on a moment. I know what we're seeing, but is this not Jesus? A carpenter? A man who makes the chair I sit on? A man who maybe crafted the building I live in? A working man, and he's doing these things. Is this not the sort of thing that's done by prophets and by and by priests? And they're scathing of him, and he seems to feel it. And the crowd go to length to sort of try and bring him down to earth in their opinion. Look, this guy's got four brothers. And his sisters are here with us now. It's interesting, the brothers are named. There are some Christian denominations, of course, that don't believe that Jesus had brothers and sisters. Yet here we have it clearly in the scripture that Jesus had brothers and sisters. But they take offence at him. I wonder, really, if we're not getting something in this reading. Do you wonder perhaps if they were feeling judged and guilty by the fact that they hadn't been able to do such things as Jesus was doing? I wonder, because when I read it, and I read this wonderful story, this wonderful history, really, of Jesus' life, I begin to feel slightly inadequate. People have been healed in my ministry, but not many. Not compared with this. Because it goes on to say, does it not, that because of their disbelief, their unbelief, he could only heal a few sick. But that makes me actually feel some relieved. The disbelief of people made it difficult for Jesus. I don't think I'm glad that that happened. But I know that I'm glad that it were told that it did, because it gives me some relief that actually 
if Jesus wasn't succeeding in everything, not at least not in the way that he wanted to, then perhaps I should stop putting that pressure on myself to have to succeed. And I think perhaps there's a good lesson for, in general for life there. All of us have our ups and downs, our good days and our bad days. And sometimes the bad days, the down days, are actually beyond our control. It's other people that are causing the problem. How often have we said, work would be great if it wasn't for the people? You know, it's a fairly common feeling that life would be easier. And yet Jesus still got on with it. So I think even though we have grey days, dim days, we should just get on with it and acknowledge the fact that people stop us doing what we want sometimes and others' opinions and others' feelings and our sensitivity towards that and perhaps not beat ourselves up so badly when things don't go quite the way we want. Let's pray. Lord, it's easy to set ourselves high standards in life that we can't actually achieve. And sometimes we can't achieve those standards, not because of something about us, but because of something about other people. Sometimes people do not want to receive from us. And that gives us great relief to know, Lord. Thank you for having this, putting the scripture for us to understand. It is not always our, our fault. And help us to build our lives on, on the knowledge that you will be with us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, go in peace and have good weeks. God bless you.